Hey YouTube, thanks for tuning in. If you are in the market for an Audi R8 or just interested in the Audi R8s in general, then this is the video for you. We will find out if the Audi R8's manuals and defaults are value better than the automatic ones. Furthermore, we will do a full depreciation analysis looking at both different model years, different mileages, the V8 and the V10s, and lastly, consider both the automatic and the manual cars. Before we continue, however, smash that like button and subscribe as you will help to support the channel. Now let's start analyzing and see if we can find a good deal in the Audi R8 market. Before we start, I first need to do a little administrative message. Namely, that in my analysis I only included the German market for Audi R8s. This is because the market is insane and all the different types are represented in here. This means that the absolute prices are not necessarily applicable to your area. The price movements, however, they should be applicable and I think they can be generalized quite well. We will begin our analysis by first getting a little bit of a feel for the market. What are the prices? How many cars are there for sale? And also, how, do the, how does the mileage distribution look like? And also the year distribution. So let's get cracking. I will make myself a little bit smaller here so you can actually see what's going on on my screen. There you go. First graph which we will investigate. You can see here the price on the x-axis and the frequency on the y-axis. So what this means is that for example for a price of 40,000 euros there are approximately six cars for sale. So this tells you how the price is distributed in the market. We can see first of all that there's a clear distribution going on between 100,000 and 40,000 euros. These are most likely the older Audi R8s which are for sale. Secondly, we can see that there's a clear separate distribution between the roughly 110,000 price point and 140,000 price point. Then above that, we will see that there's a distribution from 145 to all the way up to 180,000 euros. These are most likely to be the complete new cars or the demo cars. We can already see from this graph that the bulk of the market is organized around this price point and this price point here. Now then, let's have a look of two of the most important variables which influence the price for any car. They are both the build year and the mileage. On the next figure here, you can actually see that I put two graphs. On the left hand side, there's the kilometer distribution for the market. On the right hand side, there's the year distribution for the market. Starting at the left here, we can see clearly that the market is heavily biased towards cars with low mileage. We can see that there's a large spike going on here and that most of the market is oriented to cars with less than 30,000 kilometers. We can also see that there are some extremely high mileage cars going up, up all the way to 175,000 kilometers. If we move then to the right hand side, it is no surprise that we find that the market is mostly composed of the newer Audi R8 model, meaning 2015 and later we can see clearly that the market is oriented towards the newer cars. Now, what would happen if we combine the years, the kilometers, with the price which we've seen in the previous graph? Let's find out. On this graph, there's a plot between the kilometers on the x-axis and the price on the y-axis. The color in the graph actually shows how many cars are for sale at that particular point in the market. And this might be a bit complex to interpret first, but this tells you two important things. First of all, we can see that this is an important point in the market, meaning cars which have around 10,000 kilometers and cost around 130,000 euros. These are the newer cars which are for sale, of course, and most of the cars are hoovering around this point, as you can see from the dark colors. Secondly, we can see that this is also a very important point in the market. These are probably the bit older models, which have around 25 to 30,000 kilometers and a price of around 70 and 90,000 euros. 
Let's have a look at the same graph but then with year on the x-axis instead of kilometers. Then we end up with a graph like this. We can see again that there's a concentration point in the market for the new R8. So you have a lot to choose if you're in the market for a new R8. However, we can see clearly that the older shape R8, meaning the ones from before 2015, has a more spread out picture in the market and that there's not one clear concentration point to be identified. Now let's start and move on and look at two of the final variables which you want to take into consideration before looking at more advanced analysis. First of all, we have the transmission here on the left side of the graph. We can see that most of the market is oriented towards automatic cars as there are, are about 350 cars for sale versus 50 for the manual ones. You can also see that the V10 was clearly the most popular one as there were about 270 for sale. V8s are only available to a limited extent as there are only hundreds for sale. I will make myself a bit bigger here again. Just for a second, don't worry. Now we've got a little bit of a feel for the market, like how does the distribution look for the prices, for the years and the kilometers. But now the real interesting thing starts. Let's actually investigate the relationships between these variables and see if we can find some good deals in the market. I make myself small again and we continue to the next graph. All right. Here we go. What we see here is year on the x-axis and price on the y-axis, where each dot actually represents one car in the market. We can clearly see, of course, that the older cars are priced lower, which is a natural depreciation curve. In order to emphasize this relationship, I fitted a second order regression line to this, where the blue shaded area represents the uncertainty of the line, more or less. What's interesting about this graph is first of all that you can see a clear category here on the right top. You can clearly see that the newer cars are priced exceptionally high. Second, you can see that there seems to be uh, another category in the middle here, meaning from 2011 till 2015. Finally, there seems to be a third category for the oldest cars from 2007 till 2010. Interestingly, we can already see that the oldest cars from 2007 and 2008 seem to have hit their max depreciation as we can clearly see that the slope of the line is declining and that the lowest prices don't seem to make any newer lows. They seem to remain fairly stable. So this seems to indicate that the 2007 and 2008 cars won't depreciate much anymore. I actually also figured in the power of the different cars, meaning are they V8s or V10s. Let's have a look at that. This is basically the same graph, but now the V10s are made orange and the V8s are made blue. It is of course of no surprise to you that the newer cars from 2016s are only V10s. Besides that, it's also not so surprising to find out that the older cars from 2008 and 2007 are all V8s. We got now quite a clear sense of the relationship between the year and the, um, and the price of the car. But how does this look when we're actually going to look at kilometers versus the price instead of the year? Then we get this kind of graph. We can see here kilometers on the x-axis all the way spreading from 0 to 175,000 kilometers we can see clearly that there's a bottom forming here in the market. And we can also see clearly that the relationship between the two variables is negative, but that the relationship is less strong here at the top end of the kilometer range. Moreover, we can see that the line is also more uncertain as the shaded area increases. Now there's an important observation to be seen from this graph. You can see that even though that the mileage increases, the price remains more or less the same. You can see that 
this car here, for example, with a mileage of around, let's say, 85,000 km, has the same price as the cars over here with 150 and more thousand kilometers. This means that when you buy this car, you can still drive it probably a lot without losing too much value. However, buying the cars over here doesn't seem such a smart idea as you might still lose some value as the market might fall more. Let's also have a look how this picture changes when we factor in the V8 and the V10s. Now then, it's no surprise that also the V8 cars are the ones which have the most kilometers as we can see from the bottom here. In line with that, it's also no surprise that the V10s are the ones which are the newest cars and therefore have the lowest kilometers. They're represented mostly all the way on the top left here. There's however a middle area with a price of below 100,000 euros and above 60,000 euros where you could have the choice between both V8s and V10s. So far we have looked at the relationship between year and price, between kilometer and price, and we did this for both the V8 and the V10. But there's still one important variable missing from this analysis, meaning the manual and the automatic transmission cars. How does the picture change if we actually look to those? As you probably have heard, it might have been that the manuals are actually going up in value or at least not decreasing anymore in value. But let's figure out if the data would support this. This graph requires a bit of explanations, so bear with me. We have here first again on the x-axis the year and price on the y-axis. Each dot is again a car, where the blue ones are the automatic ones and the orange ones are the manual ones. The blue line is the regression line for the automatic ones and the orange one is the regression line for the manual ones. And an interesting thing is happening on this graph, mainly this crossing point. What you see here is that first of all the slope of the two lines are more or less equal, meaning that from 2015 till 2009, both automatic and manual cars depreciate at the same rate. However, if we look to 2008 and 2007, we can see that the orange line is actually crossing over the blue line. So this seems to be giving a clear indication that the manuals actually decrease less than the automatic ones and are holding their value better. How does the picture change if we start to add miles? Do manuals still hold their value better? We're looking at kilometers on the x-axis and price on the y-axis, with again in blue automatic cars and manuals in orange. Both have again a regression line fitted, uh, fitted through them. We can see that initially the orange line is decreasing at the same rate as the blue line, but that it wants to cross over, but it's actually not crossing over. This means that when you start to add mileage, even though it's a manual car, the value, uh, the value gain which you had when we look to the previous graph is actually disappearing. So what these last two graphs shows us is that the manual cars from 2007 and 2008 seem to be indeed holding their value better. However, this value difference is actually disappearing when you start to add mileage to them. Mileage really kills the value of the car when you're looking to both manual and automatics. We looked at a lot of different features which can affect the price of the Audi R8. We looked at kilometers, at year, at type, at engine type, V8 and V10, and finally we looked at the transmission type, automatic or manual. But how do you find the car which is right for you and also where you won't lose too much money on? That's a good question, because there are just too much features which affect the price. To solve this, I wrote an algorithm which identifies cars which are either priced over market value or under market value. And it finds these cars by looking at both the engine 
the transmission, the kilometers, the years, and the price itself. So everything what we analyzed is taken into account in this algorithm. Now what does it come up with? Let's have a look. In this picture, which is a 3D plot, which I will first explain, we will have price on this graph, year on this graph, and kilometer on the upstanding graph here. Each dot in this picture represents a car in the market. The black ones are the cars for which the algorithm says these are priced normally. The white dots, those are the cars for which the algorithm says there's something different with these. They're either above market or below market value. An interesting group can be identified, namely this group here. As we saw in the earlier analysis, there seems to be a bottom forming in the prices, especially for the V8 ones. If we start to look here to the year, we can see that for 2008 and 2007, which are the V8 cars, that there is a clear group here which doesn't fit in the market. These are the white dots here. There are 2007 and 2008 cars with a price ranging from 40,000 to 50,000 euros. However, when we start to turn the graph, so also the kilometer range becomes clearly visible, we see that these cars have actually the same price as the cars here, but have a lot more kilometers. Meaning, if you are in the market for an Audi R8 between 40 and 50,000 kilometers, you probably want to avoid these cars as you can get a better car for the money, a car with less mileage. The same actually goes for this car over here, which is a car from 2012 with roughly 100,000 kilometers and the price of 80,000 euros. Also that would be an exceptionally bad buy as you will immediately lose a lot of money on that car. Rather, you should be looking at the black dots to find a car which fits better with the market, which are better quality for money. Let's conclude this video with a summary of what we've seen, after which I will give you my recommendation for which Audi R8 I will be buying. First of all, we could see that the V10s are clearly clustered, especially the V10s after 2015, that they are clearly clustered at the top end of the market. These are really a class of their own, which are still extremely expensive and probably will see a lot of depreciation. Second, the V8 market seems to be bottoming out as there was a nice curve visible for the prices. It also seems that the manual V8, especially in 2007 and 2008, hold their value a lot better. But this value difference disappears when you start to add mileage as we could see clearly that the slope for the automatic one and the manual cars were not crossing over but staying similar to each other. That gives you an interesting conclusion because if you look to the kilometers available for the V8 cars which are manual or automatic you can see that there's actually a really wide spread of available. They range from around 50,000 kilometers all the way up to the other end of the spectrum of 175,000 kilometers. So if you're in the market for that type of car, you would need to really do a good analysis and not buy one at the top end of the kilometer range. Now what would I be buying? Personally, I would be looking to a V8, a manual one, between 50 and 60 or 70,000 kilometers, which is priced more or less at the lower end or the mid range of the market. I think this type of car won't lose its value that much anymore as we can see clear bottoming patterns and there's still a lot of room also when you add some mileages before it will start to depreciate any further. Now if you like this video please hit the subscribe button and smash that like button as you will support the channel. Which car do you want to see next time? Let me know in the comments and I will do a follow up analysis. See you next time.